The Dublab Spring Membership Drive is happening now and throughout the month of May. If you enjoy the Dublab archives, help us continue by donating today and become a member. For more details, visit dublab.com slash membership. Hello and welcome to In Conversation, a Dublab podcast where each week we will bring you interviews from the Dublab Radio Archives. Good morning, Terry. Hey, how are you, Carlos? Really well. Thank you so much for coming through. And Eric, appreciate it, man. <laughs> My pleasure, baby. En <laughs> route from one hotel to the next. Oh, uh, please. Let's don't talk about hotels or record companies. Uh, <laughs> oh. we, 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 we've been instructed under council. You know, or, or, or airplanes. Well, airplanes, 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 yeah. yeah that's, that's always a, <laughs> another kind of uh, dilemma, but hey. Yeah, well, great to have you back here in California. Um, we're broadcasting live right now over the World Wide Web. But California, weather's nice. Uh, people looking forward to the uh, concert tonight. And um, thank you for coming through, man. Oh, yeah. We're going to be at the Atlas Supper Club over on Wilshire Boulevard. And uh, we'll have the quintet with us. Uh, Eric and I are the ones that got up this early. So there are just the two of us here right, <laughs> right now. But tonight, the, uh, the full band's going to be blowing. And it's going to be, uh, we're going to try and make it uh, as interesting for everyone as we can now. Yeah. Beautiful. It was, it was wonderful last time, um, two nights, uh, first at the World Stage, uh, Billy Higgins' spot, then at the Atlas, which is at 3760 Wilshire Boulevard, for those of you out there uh, catching this stream, and um, in Los Angeles, or close enough that you might be able to come out. It's going to be really nice. Um, so so the other pieces that are coming, you have a reedsman, mm-hmm. you have a percussionist. Yeah, Rich Fadoli doing soprano saxophone, tenor, sax- tenor saxophone, and flute, and... Um Aleo Poveda on percussion, and Dave Onderdonk will be playing the, uh, the electric guitar for us. Great. And so tell us a little bit about your travels. You're, you're back here in L.A. You have uh, to make it up to San Francisco tomorrow. And any, any interesting things happen to you while you've been on the road traveling around a lot? Well, uh, we couldn't check into our hotel this morning, as you know, because you were with us, and, <laughs> and, and they started talking trash about, well, we don't, we don't have rooms for you till 1 o'clock. Right. Uh, but aside from that, the usual ups and downs of road travel, you know, uh, generally speaking, what, what happens is that the preparation is, is a complete drag, but once you get on the stage, it, it kind of makes up for it. It's just that, you know, getting from the hotel to the stage, from the stage back to the hotel, from hotel to hotel, from city to city, that can uh, begin to wear on you after a while. But, you know, you, we have examples like uh, Duke Ellington and Count Basie and uh, Stan Kenton and uh, Louis Armstrong and, and the people who uh, who made the road a way of life and who actually thrived on the challenges. And so we're trying to kind of follow in their footsteps and, uh, and keep the faith. Beautiful. And uh, keeping the faith, we are heading to the mosque in a little bit, which is something that uh, Terry always makes sure... Uh, happens where he does travel city to city, so that's a beautiful thing as well to uh, keep yourself centered while uh, in these different spaces and energies in in these cities. You know, um, one thing I definitely wanted to talk to you about, and it uh, relates a lot to Dub Lab, are the remix projects and exactly how much uh, involvement in them you have, if any, or what you feel about them in general, because you. Uh, you know, you, you collaborate with, with your fellow musicians and put together songs and arrangements and things like that, and then they, uh, they get turned around and upside down. And, you know, how, how do you feel about that? Have you had any involvement in, in any remix projects that you've enjoyed? Um, the last time, uh, the last time uh, when Time Piece was out, there were some remixes done on Love Theme from Spartacus by 4Hero07, uh, and they're both from the U.K., and by two gentlemen from from the states, Roy Davis Jr. and Pevin Everett, and uh, they they were they were all they were all quite quite beautiful as far as I was concerned. My special uh, favorite though was the was the mix that I did with Pevin Everett because um, we approached the we approached the tune in a completely different way, and he re harmonized the piece. And um, when we were listening back to it, you know, I told him that it sounded like uh, it sounded like some of the things that uh, Miles would do with with Herbie when when uh, they were in the band with Wayne Shorter and uh, Ron Carter and Tony Williams from time to time, just uh, everybody would lay out and, uh, and Miles and Herbie would do a ballad and, and they'd take it all kind of different ways because they, they weren't harmonically restricted or uh, restricted in terms of, of timekeeping. 
And I felt that uh, the remix that was done with uh, Pevin Everett was along those lines. You know, it wasn't Miles and Herbie, but it was it was Terry Callier and, and Pevin Everett, <laughs> and it was all right with me. Uh, on um, on the latest album, Lifetime, and the, the remix was centered around um, the song called I Don't Want to See Myself Without You. And I did a remix in uh, New York with a young man named Sandy Rivera. And uh, we went out to his house in Jersey, and he had a very nice, very nice setup in his basement. And so um, we, we redid the vocal in order to... Uh, to facilitate things, and uh, that turned out very well. And then there were a couple of mixes done in England by uh, Penn and Teller. What's their names? I don't know. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm asking you these questions. Yeah, but... hey, man. But anyway, <laughs> anyway there, were, there, were, I, there were three remixes done, and um, I, again, uh, it, it shows, a, it shows a, a burst of creativity. Uh, revolving around something that, uh, that that I've had the pleasure of doing. So, you know, you feel kind of appreciation for having, uh, generally speaking, younger artists find, finding your work interesting enough to uh, to work with, uh, finding your work interesting enough to to redo and put their stamp on. But but, but they, the basic thing is that they want to be part of it, and they want they want to have a, they want to get a piece of that pie and, and be in the mix. So. Um, I, I look forward to, to, to the remixes and, and seeing um, what ideas um, are, that uh, the other artists, the remix artists have and how, how they're going to change things and how things are going to be set up. Uh, Mickey, Mikey Ben did a couple of mixes. Um, uh, over, he's from the UK and uh, mixes by Mikey is, is the moniker he goes by. Yeah. And um, he did two, two remixes. One was pretty much a straight dance uh, remix, but then he did a, he did a, mm, a kind of uh, jazz uh, oriented uh, refurbishing of the tune that, uh, that I thought was just uh, tremendously creative. And generally speaking, this is what happens when people, um, when, when the remixes are done, you know, you, you, you get in a, you get ideas for other approaches to the music, and some of the things that have appeared on the remixes have, uh, you know, re you know, some of the ideas from the remixes on Spartacus from Timepiece uh, came to fruition with some of the tunes on Lifetime, and uh, in like manner, some of the tunes that are some of the remixes ideas that that are done on I Don't Want to See Myself Without You will hopefully be on the next album, although. The way things stand between the record company and I right now, I'm not sure that there'll be a next album. And I'm, not, I'm not supposed to say that, but right. you know, people say they want the truth from you, but then when you start telling them the truth, they they start running from you, or hitting you, or throwing stones, or uh, or telling you to stop that. Um, well, don't just say that. <laughs> say it over the whole internet, because <laughs> because you just mm -hmm. said it in a big way. Mm -hmm. um, the 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 question I have also is just about um, do those uh, styles that you come into contact with through the remixes ever um, you know, make you make you feel like you want to explore um, any any of the the dance culture or of the you know more electronic based uh, or you know sample type music and do any of the arrangements. Uh, I mean, obviously you said you you uh, take from them at times, but mm -hmm. do do they ever kind of kind of make you feel um, bright about uh, you know what 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 this generation is doing? Absolutely, because you know you have to stay. You have to stay abreast of what's happening. I, I, I was uh, lucky enough to work with a, a man named Charles Stepney, who was a fantastic instrumental arranger, uh, vocal arranger, and uh, writer, composer, and producer. Greatest ever. Right. Well, yes, sir. And okay. uh, uh, he worked with uh, Rotary Connection and with the Dells and with Terry Callier and with and with Earth, Wind, and Fire. And uh, you know some of the some of the most beautiful vocal arrangements that Earth, Wind, and Fire did, like for reasons and uh, after the love is gone and those kind of deep harmonic. Uh, presentations, a lot of that was done, a lot of those arrangements were done by Charles Stepney. And one of the things that he said was that it was, it was very important, it was critical as a matter of fact, to be abreast of what was happening uh, currently in the musical world. But when it came time to make your record, you, have to, you, you had to be yourself. And that way, you wouldn't have to flinch when, you're, when, when 10, 15 years down the line, your, your records were replayed. And that was, that he, that was, that was not only instructional and... Uh, a, 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 a thing that a mentor would say it was also prophetic because um, the the work that we did in uh, between 1972 and 1975 has recently been re-released by MCA Universal um, over over in the UK and in Europe. The three albums we did for the Chess Cadet label, Occasional Rain, um, What Color Is Love, 
and I Just Can't Help Myself are all back in print now in, in the CD format. And um, listening to them, li- listening to those CDs, it's, it's as though they were recorded the day before yesterday. And so what Charles said about staying current but being yourself is, uh, is very critical to, 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 the, uh, to the longevity and uh, uh, the success of an artist. Um, I think that, you know, providing, God willing, that we get a chance to do another CD, there will be some, uh, there will be some um, more, uh, you know, it, it's, it's a progression. Uh, Timepiece was the first album I'd done in about 15 years, so there were some things I needed to say, and there was a certain format that I needed to use to say those things. Lifetime was kind of a settling in, so there are there are more uptempo things and and more of um, more of a more of a more of a look toward the world rather than, rather than a look within. Um, Lifetime deals with the problems of the of, of the world as we face them day to day. Timepiece deals more with things that we as as we would like for them to be. You see, and with, with tunes like Brotherly Love and. Uh, uh, no more blues. Um, lifetime, on the other hand, deals with things that are in your face every day, like nobody but yourself to blame, and <laughs> and, uh, and and cuts of, of, of that type. So right. you know, it's uh, it, it's a process. So as I say, God willing, if we have a chance to do another another CD, uh, it'll it'll be it'll be a step forward, uh, hopefully, and it will also um, present even more of a closer look at. Uh, at the world and the way things are and the problems that affect people and offering also some solutions. I had a friend in Chicago who used to say that he was very weary of hearing people running around shouting fire because he knew there was a crisis. What he wanted to hear was someone running around shouting exits or, 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 or as my interpretation of it was, suggesting solutions to those problems. Solutions, yeah. Right. So exits, exits. Right. <laughs> right this way. <laughs> here, here, here's the bucket full of water yes, that you sir. can put out yes, that sir. fire with. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, Speaking of uh, the past, uh, I mean, I, I would really love it if we could uh, just enter into one more piece. And, sure. um, you know, I, I, again, it's, it's an honor to have you here. It's an honor to, uh, to know you and to uh, um, know that we're going to be able to spend more time together. And w- wherever you might be uh, in the world at this point, Dub Lab audience, do uh, keep your uh, eyes and ears tuned and uh, open for Terry Collier, who will probably be somewhere near... You're a part of town at some point in time in the next uh, next decade. So <laughs> hopefully, yeah. yes, hopefully it'll last a decade. But uh, can can we enter into something from one of the cadet records? From one of the cadet records. Um, let me see. My when, my, my favorite is the one that you that you uh, uh, say is is a. Uh, uh, how how many how many bars? Eighty eighty two bars straight verse free, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, Alley Wind. Alley Wind song. But, I don't you know, know if I, I don't know if I can remember all the words of that, Carlos. That's yeah. the, that, were, that was when I was young and <laughs> I, young no, and I know, quite I quite know. in. Uh, so I do was, we want to bring Eric back in? Or I you was want to do one solo. Um, at least in the conversation out there, I, I can do one from the from the uh, uh, from the. Uh, can you do part of Dancing Girl? Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> Conversation was produced by Dub Lab, a nonprofit radio station broadcasting live from Los Angeles since 1999. Sound editing and theme song by Matea Bame. For more programming, visit dublab.com. And thank you for listening.